Hello, welcome to the first video in a new chapter of the book, Nature of Code, chapter 11. Only strangely, chapter 11 does not exist. So I'm doing something a little different here where all my previous other Nature of Code videos that go along with this Nature of Code book, the book was written first, uh, came out in 2012, and, um, and this is the current version of it. And then I made videos after the fact. Now, what I'm going to do, I want, uh, so chapter nine is about genetic algorithms and chapter 10 is about neural networks. And I have a set of video tutorials that go along with both of those chapters. Today, I'm going to start talking about something that I want to be in the next edition of The Nature of Code in chapter 11 called neuroevolution. So I wanna take the idea of a genetic algorithm and a neural network and use them together in a magical way to make wonderful things happen on the screen. Uh, or, or it doesn't have to even be on a screen in some other capacity that I can't even imagine right now. So what is it that I am going to do? So first of all, okay. So if you, ah, wrong keyboard. If you have watched some of my, some of my ex other neural network tutorials, you, the most recent thing before the recording of this video that I made was a doodle classifier. It's kind of the classic machine learning uh, classification example. I have some images, maybe they're handwritten digits, maybe they're doodles of cats and rainbows and unicorns and all that sort of stuff. And I want to feed those things into a neural network and I want the neural network to classify them. And if you've watched those videos, you might have noticed that there's this whole elaborate training process. The training process involves making that guess, having some labeled correct data, and then feeding that, and, and then looking at the error, like what is it supposed to be versus what it guessed, and feeding that error back through the neural network. Looking at the guess output uh, versus the correct label, calculating an error, and sending that error backwards through the network through a process known as back propagation, where all of the weights are tuned and changed. So while this is the kind of most well-known and probably most common and sort of standard technique for training a neural network, back propagation with gradient descent, very fancy sounding, there are many other ways, uh, I mean, there, there are some other ways that you can train a neural network, one of which is using a genetic algorithm. So what if we just threw away all of that calculus math and all of this sort of like error this, error that, and back propagation this, and we just said, hey, I've got an idea. Why don't I make, instead of having one neural network, why don't I make a thousand of them and I'll try them all. Maybe some of them will classify images, maybe one will classify images better than another one does. Maybe I'll keep that one. And one just really gets everything wrong, maybe I won't keep that one at all. And maybe I'll pick from the ones that kind of do well and take those and duplicate them or mix them up to make a new population of neural networks and see how those do. And this is the central idea of a genetic algorithm. Now, I might suggest if you want to, if, you, if genetic algorithms are totally new to you, you might wanna pause this video right now and go watch my genetic algorithm tutorials. If the concept of a neural network is totally new to you, yeah. You could pause and go watch those tutorials, but you could probably also just keep going. Because <laughs> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna cover almost all of this stuff anyway, kind of as I try to sort this out. So I'm gonna take a break for a minute. I'm gonna erase this whiteboard here, what's there right now, left over from the doodle classification, and then I'm gonna diagram out how a neural network can be trained using a genetic algorithm, and then through that diagram, I will discover things I need to add to my neural network code base, and at some point. If all goes according to pl plan, um, you know, I have this particular, this was the doodle classifier example, uh, which you see here, it's classifying my rainbow. But um, I, what I want to do is take this version of the game, flappy coding train, it's not very flappy, I guess, um, and see if I can use a neural network that is that evolves to play this particular game. So that's gonna be the goal of this series. And then I have all sorts of other ideas for other types of neuroevolution uh, tutorials. I believe this is often also referred to as NEAT. NEAT algorithm, because it's NEAT. Neuroevolution of, it's the, here's the thing. I was just saying neuroevolution, and all the while it could sound so much smarter by saying neuroevolution of augmenting topologies. That's totally NEAT. All right, be back in a minute. Now that I have a blank whiteboard, uh, let me review the steps of a genetic algorithm and think of them in the context of a neural network. 
So the first thing in a genetic algorithm that I need to do is create a population. Um, and the population is going to be a whole lot of neural networks. Neural networks are the individual elements. So maybe my population is 100 neural networks. Two, I need to evaluate fitness of, of uh, neural networks. Okay, so this is kind of like, again, this is kind of like the setup. I know that's kind of getting close to the top there. It's the thing that I'm gonna do once at the beginning of the program, my sort of initialization state. Then this is this thing that I'm gonna do for a loop, you know, generation after generation in, you know, in P5, this might be called the draw loop. Um, I need to evaluate the fitness of all the neural networks uh, and then create uh, a new population. And the way I will do that is by uh, pick quote unquote parents based on, my handwriting is getting worse and worse over time, based on, um, pick parents based on fitness scores, map to probability. I have so much room in this direction, probability. And then I want to apply a crossover, which is a way, if I pick two parents, for example, I can take half of their so-called digital DNA of one and half of the other, or some random amount of one and random amount of another, and combine them into a new entity. And then I can uh, apply mutation, which would be, which is the step of saying, hey, let me look at the DNA. Let me, I have this child DNA that is made from two parents. Let me randomly just change some of it up as if it's spontaneously mutating to continue to have variation in the system. So again, you could go watch my genetic algorithm tutorials where I describe all this stuff in much greater detail of different techniques and why and how, but this is the basic idea. But you might remember if you did watch those tutorials that this is kind of like the algorithm and it, you know, obviously you can change it and be creative with it, but it's kind of somewhat of a standard. The really tricky thing when you're making your own genetic algorithm and applying it to your own project is as follows. Number one is this idea of genotype versus phenotype. What is that so-called digital DNA? The genotype, what is the data of that DNA? And what does that data do? How does it express itself into a system? So this is really key in thinking, okay, well the neural network is somehow the genotype. What could be the data? So in fact, thinking back to my simplest neural network, which is just has a two, two layers really, a hidden layer and an output layer. The inputs come into the hidden layer, they get processed from the hidden to the output, they get processed, and then we have a final result. So, the core elements of those layers are weights and biases. So all the weight matrices and the bias vectors, those things, which I describe in detail in my neural network tutorials, make up the genotype of the neural, neural network, the core aspect of it. Now the phenotype is the expression. It's really, really what am I using the neural network for? So for example, the expression of the neural network might be in the game Flappy Bird, the decision whether to jump or not jump. That's the expression. That's how it's going to be used, applied in a given scenario. In a classification example, it could be it's classifying an image. That's how the data from the neural network is going to be used to make a guess based on this image and, and, and turn it into a string. So that's aspect number one. So we've got that. So what that means is when I write the code, I need to somehow figure out how to do crossover and mutation with weights and biases. I, I think I can create probably a population of random neural networks that's just gonna be like new neural network, new neural network, new neural network. Evaluating the fitness I've gotta to get to, I can pick two random ones, but I need to apply crossover mutation. And to be honest, what I might do at first in my first implementation is not even bother with crossover and not even bother with picking more than one parent. So one technique to simplify the genetic algorithm is just to make copies. So I can pick the good ones and make copies of them, mutate a little bit and keep going. It may not work as effectively as if I use crossover, but it'll certainly be easier to code. So the other thing that's tricky with, um, with when you're making your own genetic algorithm and applying it to your own project 
is the fitness function. Question mark, question mark, question mark. So this is crucial. If you don't have a good fitness function, this whole selection process, this quote unquote natural selection, it's not very natural here, it's like digital selection, this, I'm not gonna be able to distinguish between members of the population that do really well, that should be, that their digital DNA should be passed down to the next generation versus ones that don't. So I want a good fitness function that gives me a, a good range of probabilities. And so in this case, we could think about the classification. It could be, okay, well this neural network, give it 100 images, its fitness is how many of those it classified correctly. And we could even go into it deeper and somehow score the fitness in according to its confidence level about classifying them correctly. But that might, that might be flawed in some ways also. So that's one thing. With the Flappy Bird scenario, if we think about the Flappy Bird game, what is the fitness here? Well, the fitness could, would simply be the score. So I am a neural network. I am, I am a neural network playing flappy coding train now. Beep, beep, boop, boop, input, output, beep, boop. That, am I still like recording a video tutorial? Um, so it could just be like, how long am I able to go through this world without running into a pipe? So that could be the fitness. So I could say, hey, why don't you, a thousand of you try playing this game? A thousand of you electronic neural network magic machines try playing this game. And, the, and your fitness is how long you last before you run into a pipe. And so that is the fitness function. So we have all the pieces. So what do I have already? Like if I'm going for this Flappy Bird example, I already have the Flappy Bird game. So I have the Flappy Bird code. I have my genetic algorithm examples, but ultimately there's not really, I don't really have a genetic algorithm library per se, so I'm probably gonna have to build the genetic algorithm stuff in the code, but I do have a neural network library. So I don't have to write, I don't have to write the Flappy Bird game, I don't have to write the neural network library. However, it might make sense for my neural network objects to know about crossover and mutation. That might be something that probably should go into the neural network library so that at any moment I could say like, hey, you neural network and you neural network, get together and make another one. <laughs> or hey, you neural network, mutate yourself. So I probably should, that's something, so that's the first thing I think I'm gonna do in, uh, in the next video is add crossover and mutations or maybe to start more simply, I'm just gonna start with like a copy function just to kind of get going here, a copy function and mutation. Um, so those things need to go into the neural network library. And then the third thing is I just need to apply the GA. So this, I really need to do a lot of work to write the genetic algorithm code. So I'm gonna start with my flappy board code, import the neural network library, add crossover slash copy mutation, and then start to implement the idea of a genetic algorithm in this particular program that started with the flappy bird code that imported the neural network library. That, my father bought for two zuzi. Anyway, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Random reference. Okay, because it's like the flappy bird that imported the neural network library that 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 added the genetic algorithm. That there's a, there's a song going on there that somebody else will finish for me. All right. Um, yeah, Passover is coming up. Okay, so. Uh, that's that. Okay, so you've made it to the end of this first video for chapter 11 of The Nature of Code, which doesn't even exist yet, but maybe by the time you're watching it, oh, I'll be so happy if it exists by the time you're watching this. Um, and so in the next video, I'm gonna revisit the neural network library and add functions for copy and mutation. I'll see you there.